Inside Business in association with Global Eye. By making a will, you can decide what happens to your property and possessions after your death. Although you do not have to make one by law, it is the best way to make sure your estate is passed on to family and friends exactly as you wish. If you die without a will, your assets may be distributed according to the law rather than your wishes. Also, what happens when, as an expat, you live in one country and make a will in another? With us on Inside Business today is Tim Searle, who is CEO of Globalite. Well, thanks a lot for coming back in today to uh, Thank you very much, Business. Rick. Good to see you, Tim. Um, you know, what uh, percentage of people actually make wills, do you think? Well, we don't have any defi definitive figures on actually the percentage, but we know it's very small. Certainly our own research with our own clients is that it's something that's always overlooked. It's a shame, really, but it is. Now, the situation with being an expat, of course, the UAE is full of expats. Um, how does it stand when, you're, when you come to make a will? Well, once again, it's, it's something I think on the expat checklist they should be doing. I think uh, even a lot of people back at home forget to do it. I think it even becomes even more prevalent that one should look at this when they go overseas because maybe they're building up assets in another place as well as maybe having assets back at home. They now have another dimension to their estate. Uh, and what I mean by estate is everything that they own, you know, whether it's property, whether it's stocks, shares, you know, trusts, uh, insurance policies, works of art, cars, etc. It's basically everything that has a net value to them. What are the main things to think about um, you know, before going in and actually writing a will? I mean, before that, you should have some time to think about, obviously, who you'd like to leave your assets to. Most definitely. And I think the other thing you need to do, uh, certainly we send out a questionnaire to get people familiar with the, the shape and the structure and some of the terminology that's used in wills and will writing. And once you've had that and you've had time to digest on how it works, you can then start to think about what assets you want to go where and who you want them to go to. Now, Tim, on the program yesterday, we asked uh, viewers to send an email so they have a question for you regarding wills today. Um, we asked, uh, well, actually, we had an email from Sanju, who's in Dubai, and asks, what's the situation with Sharia law when it comes to making a will in the UAE? Here, we have this sort of grey area at the moment where a will is typically an English law document. Of course, here in the UAE, we are, we are governed by Sharia law, Islamic law. So it's basically a, a bit of a misnomer to say we have a Sharia-compliant will because the, the two are totally different. Under Islamic law, there are fairly defined guidelines in place as to what happens in the event of your demise and how your estate is going to be divided between your family members. Um, whereas in a will, for example, you could decide in your, in your instructions within a will to give nothing to your family if you wish and pass it all to, to a TV presenter or a charity or whatever it might be. So, this is where there's a, a clear delineation between the two types of, uh, of legal systems conflicting. What you can do, though, is to try and put a document in place which stipulates the local legal uh, fraternity here that this is an instruction that I would like to have carried out. I appreciate it. it. It's not in line with Sharia law, but because my domicile is somewhere else, because I would like this to happen under my law, then what happens is that the, the courts locally will take a view on that and either elect to rule in favour of that or to go down Sharia. So we don't have a clear cut way to go just yet. Now we have uh, Monica in Bahrain who asks, um, if you've bought an apartment in the UAE um, and were to die and have not made a will, what would happen to it? Sharia. Plain and simply, um, there's no instruction in place to say to the contrary, um, whether here or anywhere else, then it will go under the laws of the land. And I keep trying to make people clear about this, that you know, if you have assets in this country, then you come under the laws of this country. Conversely, if an Emirati were to buy property in the UK, in the event of their demise, they would be levied a 40% death tax, even though they're not from the UK. That is the laws of the UK. So you have to be very relevant. Uh, you have to be very aware of these things that are going on. Okay, well, let's take a phone call now. We have um, Roger, who's on the line uh, here in Dubai. Um, Roger, what's your uh, question for Tim regarding wills? Hi, Greg. What is the situation when it comes to marriage? Would my wife inherit everything automatically if something was to happen to me? Very good question, Roger. Um, unfortunately, it's a, it's, a, it's a misconception again that if people have no will in place that their wife and children will inherit everything that they own. It's not the case, I'm afraid. Um, and there's some very clear uh, rules, what we call intestacy rules, i.e. if you die without a will, uh, which stipulate how your estate will be treated. Um, you may be married, but if you don't have any children, 
if there's no will in place, you could lose all of your estate, certainly in the case of a British person, back to the actual the government. If there are children in place, then there are only certain guidelines and certain amounts of money that are available to you. So, once again, another good reason to look at getting a will sorted out. Okay, Roger, d does that answer your question? Yes, Greg. Thank you very much. Finally, what happens if somebody wants to dispute a will? Well, once again, it is a contestable document. So, uh, you know, you hear of these, uh, these situations, typically in films, etc., where someone's been cut out of the will and they want to go back to their lawyers and say, you know, why have they been uh, taken out? For whatever reasons, generally executives will be lawyers and they actually could tell you why you've been uh, cut out of the will. Um, it is contestable, and this is a, this is a weakness of a will. And that, for example, this is a weakness of a will, for example, under the Sharia in, in situation as well. So once we sit with our clients and find out what they're doing and what they want their will to do, it might be worth taking it a stage further and looking at uh, things like uh, company structures and, and trust arrangements because a trust arrangement is not contestable. Tim Sell, always a pleasure to have you on the program. Thank CEO you very much. Global Eye. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Well, that's it for this edition of Inside Business. You can contact the program as ever by writing to ib at city7tv.com. But for now, from all of us on this edition of the program, goodbye and have a good weekend. Inside Business, in association with Global Eye.